everybody. Welcome to Beauty Buzz with Lori. Uh, today we are going to learn how to brew your own kombucha. So I have been doing this for probably about five years or so. And um, the reason I started doing it is because I wanted to introduce probiotics into my diet. Um, and I do not like to take pills, so this was a different way to do that. So, uh, kombucha is basically just fermented black tea, and then you basically flavor it with different fruits. Um, there are also other ways to do this. You can uh, do some research like I did on YouTube to see if you like other ways, and then kind of create your own. Um, it is kind of fun to be a chemist in your own kitchen. So, anyway, um, you might be asking, okay, this is Beauty Buzz, Lori, why are you teaching me how to brew my own kombucha? Great question. So the reason I am teaching you this is because if you have ever been in a consultation with me for skincare um, and we are dealing with many different issues, we'll use acne as a example. Um, basically, your gut health. I've talked about this before in other videos, gut health is so important and it is a direct correlation to your skin. So basically whatever you're putting in your body will sometimes show through your skin. Um, so that is the reason that we're doing this today and I hope you find it fun. I love my own brew better than purchasing at the store. Uh, prior to making my own, I used to purchase GTs. Um, and had favorite flavors and everything. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So before I came on camera, I actually already washed my hands. You wanna make sure you have a clean surface. Um, I don't normally have it all pre-set up like this when I do it on a regular basis. Um, I'm back and forth at the sink because uh, it's the most tidy way to do it, I guess, and you'll find out why whenever I get started. So. This right here is my kombucha that I have been brewing. So this kombucha has been brewing for a little over a week. Um, typically I like to do um, a seven day fermentation and then another seven day fermentation, which is where I flavor it with uh, my fruit. So this right here is just on here to keep anything out. Um, this on the top you'll see through the camera, this light part right here is actually your SCOBY. So, uh, SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. So this is what is actually part of that fermentation process. So um, a couple nights ago, I actually brewed about four quarts of black tea. I use organic, you can use, or you know, play around with whatever you wanna do. People have done it with green tea in the past as well. Um, but black tea typically does the best brew. Um, so I did that so it's nice and cooled off. The reason we want it to be completely cooled off is because we don't want to burn our SCOBY. I'm actually going to take my ring off so that I don't get it all yucky. Um, all right, so I'm going to pull the SCOBY out. Again, you want to do this with clean hands. So this is the SCOBY. As you can see, it's a very, it's a solid piece. And um, sometimes it'll float to the bottom or sometimes it'll stay on top. Basically, this right here is what you're going to make your brew with. So this is black tea with one cup of sugar that has had the SCOBY sitting in it for seven days, actually a little over seven days. So whenever you start with this, you always wanna stir it up before you remove any of it. And you can actually, you probably can't hear this on camera, but you can actually see um, the carbonation all right, so you just wanna make sure it's stirred up really well. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to put two cups of the kombucha that has not been flavored or tampered with in with your SCOBY because you're gonna use this to do your next batch. So you just keep on going with this. All right, so I'm gonna to try to do this as gracefully as possible. So this is two cups right there. All right, so we've got our two cups of our kombucha in with our SCOBY. We're just gonna set this aside because we don't use that until we get ready to pour our black tea and get ready for our fermentation process again. So I do find it's easiest to transfer the kombucha with something that has a pour spout on it into your bottle. So basically what I did 
since I've been doing this for so long, I save my GT's bottles and I clean them out really well um, and kept the caps to them. And then what I do is I put my fruit in the bottom. I've used, this is fresh fruit. I've also used frozen fruit. You can play around with different flavors. You can also add ginger to it. Um, I just encourage you to be creative with it and figure out what your favorite flavors are. Um, so this one is strawberry. I've got strawberry kiwi, kiwi by itself. I've just mixed a few of them in here. My absolute favorite of my own brew to make is um, pineapple. So I'm gonna go ahead. I wanna stir this up again. You always wanna stir it every couple of bottles that you get settled so that everything doesn't settle to the bottom. All right, here we go again. Okay. All right. So I'm basically just going to pour this into here. Now you do not want to fill your bottle all the way to the top. And the reason being is because this is your second fermentation process. So carbonation is still going to be forming in here. So you wanna leave a little bit of room so that it basically doesn't cause your bottle to explode. I have had this happen to me once. Um, I'm not sure why it did it, um, but basically this is what it's gonna look like. So. You just apply your cap. I wouldn't put it on too, too tight. And then we're just gonna continue with the rest of these. So with this size container, I typically get anywhere between six and seven bottles of kombucha. Basically, whenever I drink one of these because I do not like to um, eat the fruit that's on the top because it gets kind of slimy after the second fermentation process, so I strain mine with a fine strainer into the glass um, and then I wash the bottle immediately and then I put it on the counter upside down so that it can uh, dry out really well. And then once it's all dry, I just put the cap back on, put it back in my pantry. So we have some extra kombucha here. Um, I am actually going to empty the rest of this because I can make one more bottle with this, but I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, so this is where people do things a little bit differently. I don't wash my bottle all the time, my container. Um, some people wash it every time. I don't. You can call it laziness or whatever. So what I'm going to do now, because it still has some of the residue of the SCOBY in there too. So I'm going to take my four quarts of black tea. This is eight tea bags. Um, when, you, when you do this, you want to boil your water before you put your tea bags in. And then once it comes to a boil, turn the fire off and let it sit for just a second and calm down and then put your tea bags inside and steep it for a minimum of 10 minutes. Once you have steeped it, then you're gonna actually scoop those tea bags out. Be very careful so that you don't break them because then you have to start all over again. You can't put the broken tea bags with the tea back in your container. I almost forgot sugar. You don't want to forget the sugar because the SCOBY actually feeds off of the sugar. So we're gonna add the sugar. We're gonna give that a good stir. That would have tasted nasty had I forgotten to put the sugar in. Normally, I also will put the sugar in whenever it's still warm so it dissolves a little bit easier, but I didn't do that this time so that you guys could see the process. So just make sure you stir that really well. And now we're going to put this in here. See, all that sugar is in there. So what I'm gonna do, this is why I like to put it in whenever it is still warm. I'm actually going to put my scooby, everything in here. So I've got some more liquid to stir that around with. And I'm gonna put my scooby back in the bowl so that I don't mess it up. By the way, every time that you 
through your own kombucha, your SCOBY will produce another SCOBY. And you can either do two containers. You can brew two containers if you want to do multiple bottles. I don't have a ton of room in my refrigerator usually, so I like to do it just a little bit at a time. So I usually only have one container going because I can get a full week out of it. And I actually still have some bottles in the refrigerator. So, all right, now we have put the kombucha, the two cups that we saved, back in with the black tea. Now we are going to put the scoby back in. Just gently stir it. All right. So, some people use cheesecloth or just a cotton t-shirt. I keep it simple. And we're gonna put just this over top of it. Remember, it just uh, keeps any bugs or anything from getting in. And just use a rubber band. Whenever you are letting this sit for about seven days, you want to make sure that it's in a dark area. You don't want it near the sun. So in a cabinet or in a pantry that's not by a window is where you want to sit this. Um, if your container has um, something that you can write on it with chalk, then you can, I like to put the date that I need to check it on. So if you're going to ferment it for seven days, which is typically what I do, then I'll look at the calendar and make sure I'm seven days out and put that date on here and then I remember to do that. Um, one of the things I also do is take my bottles and put them in a casserole dish to stick them in the pantry so that they're all together. Um, just makes it easy to, to transport it. Um, and then if you don't have a container that has the chalk on it, then you can just get you know something like this and put your date on that so that you know when to check it. Um, so basically, I just brewed my kombucha. So you're gonna let this brew for another five to seven days. Remember, it's a two-step process. So this brews for five to seven days, and this is gonna brew for five to seven days. Some people like to brew it for a little less than that. Again, you're gonna have to play with it and see you know, what flavors you like as well as your brewing time. It may vary for some of you. Anyway, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment below and I hope you enjoyed the process. Enjoy.